Hello and welcome to Reptiles and Research. So in this really quick Beer the Dragon Care Guide, I'm going to give you, I'm going to basically tell you what you need without like a big long explanation behind it, just so you know, if I'm just looking for information quickly, here it is, here we go. So for a Beer the Dragon, you want a minimum of a 4x2x2 two two tank, that's because they need space to actually run up and down and actually use that space. They dig, climb, run around, they're very active big lizards, but also you want one end to be really really hot, a nice warm basking area, but then have the space over on the other end to really cool down. When you have such a small enclosure, that's really difficult to get it to stretch out in terms of thermal gradient that much, so the bigger the better, you can get them to have that nice thermal gradient. You can babies straight into a 4x2x2 by two by two. they're not going to get lost in there they have far bigger in the wild I've sold babies in shops for many years successfully straight into a 4x2x2 by two by two. so you don't have to waste money getting a start kit go ahead and get yourself a 4x2x2 by two by two. our channel sponsor Custom Reptile Habitats has got a really good good price 4x2x2 by two by two right now that is $299 it has a little case in this corner which allows you to perfectly place all your basking lights in the right order to make it match and go for sunlight let's go to lighting so what we want for lighting is obviously want them to warm up so we want a basking bulb to be over a rock on one side of your vivarium that's because it's going to make this side really hot for them and the other side really cool and it gives them a thermal gradient to move in and out of heat when they want to cool down or warm up bitter dragons need to get really really hot to get their core temperature up to 36 degrees um, so you want your surface temperature of the rock beneath your basking lamp to be 40 to 42 degrees celsius that means you're just going to let your bearded dragon get nice and hot and toasty. What that means is they're not going to sit there and bask all day long. That's really unnatural. What they should be doing is going there in the morning, warming up, going about their day, and then coming back in the afternoon to do warm up again. If they sit there all day long, then they're not getting to warm up their core body temperature enough. In terms of UVB in a 4x2x2, two two, depending on screen mesh, you want a 12% linear UVB bar, or a 14% linear UVB bar. And you only want that to be one third to half of the vivarium on the heat side so that you cluster it next to your heat. So you've got this little patch of sunlight and then the shaded area for them to not only escape heat, but escape light as well and go cool down and sit in the shade. The next thing to do is really brighten up this enclosure. So what you want to do is give them a nice bright LED in the form of either a spotlight or a bar. Again, if it's a bar, you put it one third to a half and then on the heat side with the two other bulbs to create this nice sunny patch of sunlight and the shaded cooler area on the other end. So let's talk about substrate. So bearded dragons evolved in environments that are full of dirt and sand. They evolved to be on dirt and sand. So in, our, in a captive environments, you want to give them a substrate layer of basically dirt. What this does is it cushions their joints and it means they don't have to walk on hard flooring all the time. And it gives them the opportunity to dig. One, they actually love to dig. And two, if they don't have the opportunity to dig in the round in that substrate, they can actually lose muscle mass. So substrate is really important to be the dragons. What you can do is mix up a, your own DIY substrate of 50% play sand to 50% topsoil, which is really cheap to do. Or you can go full play sand, or you can mix some clay in. Really, the, the world's your oyster as long as it's loose soil that allows them to dig, and it's really good at cush cushioning their joints. You don't want to use things like calcium sands because it can cause ha it can encourage habits that are not very good for the bearded dragon, like constantly eating it. But for the most part, just if you stick to those three recommendations, uh, you'll be good to go. Let's go into decoration. So bearded dragons love to climb. They're semi arboreal, which is a fancy way of saying they like to sit up and sit on a, from a vantage point and look all around and look for predators. And because of that, they don't really like having their view impeded. So what I recommend is have all your decorations and logs and hide towards the back and your branch, branches etc at the back but have this open space at the front that allows them to one run up and down and get some exercise but two look out and don't feel like they've got like impeded and that's very much how we set up our bit of dragon setups and it's probably the way that I will do in the future as well obviously it's a balancing act between being able to have these areas of clutter and logs and hides but also this open space and obviously the bigger the enclosure the easier that is so if you want to go bigger than a 4x2x2 by, two by, two, by all means. So bearded dragons get most of the hydration from the food they eat they will drink from a, from a water bowl it does rain in the wild on occasion they do get puddles and they get water droplets like run down their head and towards their mouth and they drink it that way. So bearded dragons do get hydrated quite well in the wild so what I recommend in captivity is provide them a, a water bowl to drink from you may never see and drink from it but that's okay the choice is there as long as they're eating their greens and they're eating their bugs they should be getting the hydration you can also like 
drop water above the heads so they drink the droplets. It's quite a cool way to interact with your dragon. I wouldn't not provide them a water bowl because you always want them to have the choice of hydration. But in terms of humidity, you don't have to worry about it being too high in humidity. People breathe them all year round in Florida outside in high humidity and it's not a problem. The only problem is when the area is constantly wet and can breed bacteria. But there's a difference between relative humidity in the air and actually wet environment. For example, in here actually, in this room right now, it's quite humid, but everything around me is bone dry. That's the difference between wetness and humidity. So they can handle humidity, but maybe not constant wetness for long periods of time. When it's wet and cold, that's when you get respiratory issues and things like that. But for the most part, there's a daily cycle of humidity in the wild, and that will probably happen in your enclosure. So anywhere from 20% humidity up to 50% during the day is fine. And if it rises at night, that's fine too. You don't need to panic. What happens, it goes through a cycle. The heat burns off the, the humidity, and they have that day time dip in humidity and it'll go up at night it's perfectly fine if you're getting like huge ridiculous humidity constantly just just because of a water bowl that means that one you've probably got on the warm end and it's evaporating too quickly or you haven't got enough ventilation but either of those two are really easy to remedy so let's talk about diet so bearded dragons grow way too fast in captivity so they actually should be growing to full size in two years and people are getting them to grow to full size in six months to a year you want to slow that right down let them grow slowly and you get to enjoy the baby phase for far longer as well like it's good for like stopping liver damage from fast growth and over having to like process loads of protein constantly and gout from the over amount of protein as well just grow them slowly and you enjoy it for far longer so for babies you only want to feed like sort of like five to six protein items between the size of their eyes every day and as they get to sort of like 30 grams you can take that back to every second day um, and we're like reducing as they get to adulthood yeah, obviously if your weird dragon's getting uh, like fat around the midsection then you can take it from like every second day to every third day or vice versa if you feel that they're losing weight you can take it to like back up to another day or increase the portion size it's all a game of like playing with portion sizes right let's go into adult bearded dragons so adult bearded dragons only need sort of like four to five dubia roach size prey items um twice a week and then maybe veg in a bowl around the size of the head in terms of portion size sort of three times a week they don't actually need to eat that much many people are actually paying more money to overfeed them to cause obesity and shorten their lifetime so if you're worried about money, you actually need to feed them far less than you think, and it's far cheaper. In terms of greens, there's many things that you can buy from supermarkets, like rocket and lamb's lettuce and cress and watercress and kale and spring greens and endive. But what I actually like to do is go out and pick weeds for my bearded dragon. It's free to do, and I have a full guide on how to do that on this channel. So if you want to go and learn how to do that, go ahead and look at that video. Please, please, please do not feed your bearded dragons fruit. It causes them bloating issues. It's unnatural, they don't have fruit in the wild. It's only like perennial herbs and flowers in the wild. So, and it causes dental disease as well. So bearded dragons have what what's called an acridont tooth. So they don't actually have teeth per se, but also they have a jaw that's serrated to act like teeth. So once they get cavities and rot from all the sugars, that's basically their jaw gone. So we really want to look after them in this way. Um, just don't just don't give them fruit. They don't need it. it yeah, they like the taste of it, but it's really bad for their health. In terms of supplements, I, it's really, really simple. You can actually refine this down to give them calcium every time you feed them bugs. The reason for that is they need twice as much calcium in their blood as there is phosphorus. The bugs are actually just pure phosphorus and no calcium most of the time. So when we actually need to feed the bugs, we just dust them in calcium powder. So every time you feed bugs, give them calcium powder. And then in terms of a multivitamin, if you're feeding a varied diet of different bug species and different veg, you shouldn't really need that much in terms of different minerals and vitamins. There's multivitamin powders just there to come in after and just top up some areas that might be dipping a little bit. So you just put that on your bugs, like the same way you would dust with the calcium powder. And do that once every two weeks and you're absolutely golden. So bearded dragons will brumate and what that means is they, they basically hibernate because it gets quite cold in the wilds of Australia and they'll do this in our home. So during the winter they go into a dormancy like state so what I recommend is 
taking it to maybe mid October and then stop feeding and then give them those 15 days, those 14 days, those two weeks until the end of October. And that lets them clear out their stomach content. The reason you don't want them going into hibernation with food in their gut is because if they don't bask and get up to temperature, which they won't because we're going for low temperatures in the winter and shorter days, they might not digest properly and that can cause rot and cause illness or even death. So you want to give them those 14 days to really clear themselves out. And what that does, it means that you're ready to go by the end of October. Then what I would do is take the lighting schedule down from lights on during the day and lights off at night from 12 hours down to eight hours on during the day and then to six hours coming in in the middle of November and by December we're talking about having four hour days. What this does is some days the bearded dragon might wake up, come up, bask a little bit and then go back down. You don't want to feed during this time, you just want to make sure they have access to water and just let them go through this process. And then coming out towards spring at the end of sort of like February, we want to do the reverse and go back up to six hours and then a little bit more up to 12 hours and then by, by the time we get to like spring they're basically coming out of hibernation um, and for the most part this is the foundations of what you need to know to really look after a bearded dragon obviously this isn't everything there is to know about bearded dragons this is very much me like trying to do a really quick care guide to give people like bam 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 what they need to know but for the most part I have other care guides on the channel that go into far more detail so please go and watch that but other than that thank you very much but other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.